join me in a word of prayer. Let us all pray. Gracious God, we come into your presence today asking you to bless this memorial in which we pay tribute to our veterans, past and present, those who gave the ultimate sacrifice that contributed to the freedoms that we enjoy today. We know that it is by your decree that nations rise and fall, open our eyes that we might enjoy the freedoms that we have and also the requirements of service to continue this great nation of ours. We ask your watchful care over our President of the United States and our Congress, to our commanders in the field, and to all who serve today. May we constantly be grateful and serve in making this nation great. Amen. Next uh, thing I'd like to introduce to you, presenting the colors, are Bruce Walker from the United States Coast Guard. We welcome the fifth grade students from Leeds Elementary School presenting the Gettysburg Address. Thank you, fifth graders. The next person I'd like to introduce to you is Mr. Eugene Casey, Ward 7 Counselor, United States Navy. I didn't make the font quite big enough. <laughs> uh, I'd like to welcome everybody uh, to this celebration at the beautiful Leeds Veterans Memorial Park. And I'd first like to thank the Northampton Veterans Council for their tireless advocacy for our veterans. They are a group second to none. And yes, Brad LeVay, I will be brief. You told me that two years in a row now, so relax. As 
is uh, and also the fellow veteran and the mayor of the fine city, David David Markowitz. Also the Lead Civic Association for all they do for this village. <coughs> David Pomerantz from Central Services and his staff for opening the school for us on this day. And a special thanks to all of you for coming out for this remembrance. I'm Eugene Tace, an extremely proud U.S. Navy Vietnam era veteran, and I proudly represent Ward 7 and the Northampton City Council. It is truly a humbling honor and privilege to speak here on such an occasion. Memorial Day is our day to remember and pay respect to all who have paid the ultimate price or made the supreme sacrifice. Those brave men and women throughout history in all wars, conflicts, and situations sacrificed unselfishly their lives for all of us so we may live as we do with liberties and freedoms not known in much of the world. Today we honor those who gave their lives for us, and we hear the poem in Flanders Fields, written in 1915 by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, a battlefield surgeon, and we know the meaning of it. We look at our flag, and we see what it means. We hear the national anthem, and we hear the meaning. Pain, suffering, sacrifice, and above all, glory. Most all of us have a story and I am no different. May 4th, 2012, we suffered a huge loss to our community. Our Gold Star mother, Mrs. Joan Johnson, passed away. During the parade tomorrow in Florence, starting at 10 o'clock, please look for the Gold Star mother's car. It will be draped in black, Although she will not be in the vehicle in the flesh, she will be there in spirit. Joan Johnson was a truly wonderful woman, wife, daughter, friend, mother, and it has been a great privilege to have known her. Her son, Kenneth Johnson, was killed by small arms fire in the Quang Tri province of Vietnam on February 16, 1968 during the Tet Offensive. He was 19. I was 11. Our sleepy little village of Florence, crushed with this news. Fortunately, his body was recovered, sent home, and was laid to rest locally in the Spring Grove Cemetery, where his family can easily visit. His mother, Joan Johnson, lived for 44 years feeling this loss, they are now reunited. Many of Kenny's siblings grace us with their presence today, and we thank you for your sacrifice, and we are honored to be here with you. There's, uh, right here is Jeff Johnson, Susan Johnson, Deb Johnson, Shalane, and Ashley. February 16th is not a difficult date for me to remember. It's my wife's birthday. Every year on that date, we remember Kenneth Johnson, our friend, our hero. This day, Memorial Day, is about coming together to honor those who gave their all. As I said last year, many things have been written about many things, but never has anything been written with more meaning they have this poem. In Flanders Fields by John McRae, Lieutenant Colonel 1915. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard among the guns below, we are the dead short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Fields. And now I'd like to introduce the Honorable Mayor, 
David Narkowitz of the City of Northampton. Thank you, Councillor Tasty, for those uh, inspiring words. Uh, I also want to recognize another city councilor who's here today. Uh, Marianne LaBarge uh, from Ward 6 is also joining us here today. She's also the chair of our Committee on uh, Social Services and Veterans Affairs, uh, and also, like the organizers of this event, works hard on behalf of our city's <coughs> veterans. I also want to thank the Lead Civic okay. Association and, and the uh, Veterans Council of Northampton for their work that they do, not just on this day, but on every day, uh, to honor veterans in our community. And I join you today uh, on this special celebration in Leeds, which has its own uh, particular and unique history of this community coming together to honor those who have made sacrifice on behalf of our nation. I want to thank especially the Johnson family, acknowledging as well as Councilor Tacey did, uh, for their presence here today and for their continued, uh, for their presence at tomorrow's ceremonies and for, and for the loss of their mother, Joan Johnson, who is our city's gold star mother, and who like so many mothers across our nation, uh, we, we think of them as well on Memorial Day for the sacrifice that they have made for their country in giving their loved ones uh, to the cause of freedom and liberty. It's, it's an honor to be here today. It's an honor to be a mayor of a city uh, who does so much to honor uh, its veterans every day, but particularly those who've uh, given their lives in service to our country on this day. And I thank you for being here. I'd like to introduce the uh, president of the uh, Veterans Council of the City of Northampton, Mr. Brad LeBay. He'll be brief. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my great pleasure today to introduce a veteran, a Leeds native, an advocate of veterans' rights, an individual who has consistently demonstrated our community's commitment to honoring all men and women who served in our nation in a time of peace and in war. I give you my good friend, Gloria Tupper Kaisers. Thank you so much, Brad. I want to thank Brad personally and all the Veterans Council for inviting me to guest speak. It is an honor and a privilege on this day to remember all who serve proudly and those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Women. I want to talk about the women in the military. Women have been serving this country since the American Revolution. Women like Margaret Corbin, who took over her husband's Cannon, when he was killed, was the first woman to receive a pension, a half a month's soldier's pay, and a suit of new clothing. In the Civil War, women served as cooks, nurses, scouts, couriers, some dressed as men to serve in the infantry. Dr. Mary Walker, who was the surgeon, had to join, join the Union Army as a nurse. She was not accepted as a surgeon because men were surgeons, women were not. She later became a spy. She was captured, held for four months, released in exchange for a man. <clears throat> she was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. The Army tried to take it, take it back. For what reason, I don't know. She refused and she held on to it until her death. In 1976, it was restored. In, in 1898, in the Spanish-American War, Clara Moss, who was a nurse, volunteered to be bitten by a mosquito as Major Walter Reed suspected this was the cause of yellow fever. He was right. She died in 1901 at the age of 25 years. World War I, women enlisted in the Navy, Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard. Only before one could only be in the Army and Navy Nurses Corps. They were denied rank and pensions. World War II, Women's Army Auxiliary Corps, WAAC, was formed in 1942 by General Eisenhower. 400,000 women served to replace men for the front line. They received 
once again they received fewer benefits than the men. Serving in the Philippines during World War II, 87 nurses and men were captured by the Japanese for three years. Now we come up to the WAS, which stands for Women Air Force Service Pilots. They trained at Sweetwater, Texas, known as Fly Girls. They tested aircraft, towed targets, trained the men. When VJ Day came, victory over Japan was declared. They were discharged, no benefits. They had to find their own transportation to go home at their own expenses. Things have changed. I had the privilege of meeting Sarah Hayden, who lives in the eastern part of uh, Massachusetts, who was a wasp. I don't know how she got in because I'm five foot one and she was only 4'11", but she flew the planes, trained the men, and has quite an experience to share. There are many books available for anyone that may be interested on women that served. Now we're up to Korea. Women served once again in many capacities, mo mostly nurses in the hospitals. Eunice Coleman received a Brown Star for her service in a MASH hospital. Vietnam, 7,500 women served, mostly nurses. In August 1990, Army Major Marie Rossi, who was a helicopter pilot, was killed in Desert Storm. She was interviewed the night before, and she admitted she was scared. And she said, but this is what we do. This is what we train for. In 1986, Congress approved $1.8 million to create a memorial for all service women, a place to register their stories, military history, photos, and personal experiences. The memorial was dedicated in October 1997. I attended. It's a memory I will always treasure. All those women, all the stories, some in wheelchairs, walkers, how proud we all were. Dedicated in defense of our nation to keep our country free. Brigadier General Wilma Vaught was the leader for this memorial and she still presently is head of the memorial in Washington, D.C at the gates of Arlington Cemetery. It's very important for the men, as well as the women, to get their stories recorded. If they don't get recorded, nobody will understand the uh, service that the women, maybe an aunt, a grandmother, your mother, it, there is a form that can be filled out. It's very simple. They're not looking for a donation. If you can make a donation, that's fine. But the most important thing is to get the stories recorded. Women play such an important part in the <coughs> history of military service. It's important to have their stories recorded. Now we're up to my era in the military. I must say my military service was a very positive one. There were no wars going on. I served in the United States Army from 1955 to 1957. It was peacetime. I trained at Fort McClellan, Alabama, and when I first went in to meet the first sergeant, the first thing she said to me was, you're going to have to get that haircut. Well, right then, I just because it was very long, and I decided, no, I'm not. So I kept it pinned up all through basic training got away with it. After basic training, of course they give you a choice of where you would like to go. Well, wait, I'm getting ahead of my story. After basic training, and I must say I was very surprised that there were women in our group that washed out. They could not take the rigorous pace. We were up at five out at dawn. We were on such a very rigid schedule. You mark to class, you mark back to eat lunch, mark back to class, do PT study all about the history of the military, but it was positive. We were all in the same boat and we all had a good time and survived. Then in the, um, the military decided that the best fit for me would be to go to Army and Air Force Clerical Procedure School. Nothing, as you well know, moves in the military without a form. You have to have a DD form for everything. So I went to school there. 
and after graduation, I requested Texas and California. And with the wisdom of the United States government, they sent me to Fort Gavins, Massachusetts, <laughs> right in my own backyard, which was good because I was very young and I was happy to be able to go home on the weekend. Um, I think I was uh, secretary to the Post Entertainment Director for about a month, and then they made me theater manager, which was wonderful. I managed four theaters on base, did all the scheduling for the movies, and there were three service clubs there. We all went to the dances. I always loved the arts and was able to participate in dance and various programs and so forth. So I would say my experience in the military was positive. I would recommend it for any young person that would want to join today. However, in today, this 2012, with women being able to go overseas and be on the so-called front line, it's a little more dangerous. But I want to thank Brad and the people of Leeds for coming out for this very special program. And hopefully we'll see you tomorrow in Florence. And I thank you once again, Brad and the Veterans Council, for inviting me to speak today. Thank you. Next up, we have seeing the Star Spangled Banner, Samantha Hines. Please rise. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous night or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. <laughs> Thank you, Samantha. Great job. And our next we have placing of the wreath. I'd like to uh, introduce Reverend David Whiteley in for our benediction. 
And now as we go from this place, may we go with a sense of renewed gratitude for what we have that has been purchased the sacrifice of others. And may God grant that that sacrifice would not be made in vain. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May God lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. And uh, I'd like to introduce our veterans, called Veteran Officer Deep Connors. Uh, I'll tell you about a website, which I would have screwed up. Hi, yes, I, I usually try to stay focused on um, the meaning of Memorial Day, but I do ask um, everybody just, I have up here uh, either a postcard or a refrigerator magnet. And what it's for on there is a new web address. It's called Mess. Mass Vets Advisor. Basically, anybody who's ever been on the old Google machine and wanted to find out something, you punch in a term or you look over under categories, that's what this is going to be. It's a website now for the state of Massachusetts. I worked on the committee for a year. If you know of a veteran, if you are a veteran, if you have a son or a daughter or a mom or a dad or anybody who's a veteran and you want to know what they might be entitled to, in benefits, it's going to be on this website. So, um, as we conclude today, if anybody wants them, I'm going to be holding on to them right up here. Come and take a card uh, and pass it on or look it up. It's going to be a great website. It's going to finally get all the veterans the things that they needed and earned and deserve. Thank you very much. I'd like to draw everybody's attention to the car here from the 1812 Auto Body, which has some 34 or 500 names of Vietnam veterans uh, on it. And uh, there's actually another one in the works right now where he's making the, name, the letters smaller, the font size smaller, to put even more names on there. And this is a courtesy of the 1812 Auto Body. Thank you very much, everybody. You're welcome to go look at it, touch it. Even the kids even get a chance to sit in it if they want. Thank you very much for coming, everybody. And thank you so much to the Johnson family. Thank you.